So, a few weeks ago, a man walks into Avian and says, I want a Zen Puma. Zen Puma, sir, what does that mean? I want you to make me one with everything. So, that's what we've got here. It's, it's a Puma with everything. So you can see we've got the speed control frame on it with our um, bullet pin control frame fittings there. Um, it's got the uh, keel pocket fairing on the back. It will be having a carbon stinger on it at the, um, as soon as we get those back in stock again. It's got um, carbon fibre washout rods on it, which are standard now anyway. It's got the carbon fibre outer lead and edges though, which is an option. It's also got the carrier wing folding option on it. It's got our super light laminate lower surface. It's got a full laminate top surface. Um, basically, yeah, this is the Puma with everything. It's got um, carbon fibre carbon fibre wing tip fairings on it as well and I had the pleasure of test flying this one um, about a week ago on Lord's Seat um, fairly light conditions enough that there were a lot of paragliders around um, no real problem staying up but but pretty crowded with the paragliders in the sky so today we're on Weatherfell in the Yorkshire Dales, um, which is um, near the near the home of um, where the guy that ordered it comes from. And um, a guy called Tony, he's got some interesting stories to tell about hand gliding. So we have a bit of a chat to him and um, and talk about what his plans are, what he's going to do with this glider because he had his first flight on it today. So um, and definitely a lot less than ideal conditions. Um, so we'll find out what he thinks of it. Okay, so um, here's the guy that um, that's ordered this lovely glider. It's a guy called Tony. Flies locally around the Dales, and so Tony, what was your so what was your thinking behind um, getting the lightest weight, high performance glider on the market? Then what was uh, it that first attracted you to that? Well, first of all, the lightness. So I bought this uh, this glider. It is, I think, about eight kilograms lighter than my last flex wing um, it appears to have the same sink rate and a much better glide um, i've also bought it in conjunction with the libero harness i normally fly with uh, with a rotor harness that one down there and um, the libero weighs four kilograms and then the chute is 1.8 kilograms so i've got a, a, a uh, harness there that weighs 5.8 kilograms compared to 16 kilograms uh, with my harness so I've got this huge weight saving um, the other thing that I really liked about the Puma was not only is it only 27 and a half kilograms but when it's short packed it's very very soft on the shoulder so lifting it off the car and walking up a hill is an absolute breeze and I actually managed to carry two of these up uh, Treat Cliff without even breaking a sweat. He did one. One. One of them was for me when I um, when I was feeling a bit ill. So um, yeah, he was. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was very so, good of him. I, so I flew. I flew uh, this glider first. A friend of mine, Bob Delahaye, uh, had bought one off Tim, and um, I was instantly impressed. Uh, it flew straight. It glided well. It had an amazing sink rate. Um, and I ended up bottom landing at uh, in a down sloping field at Nonceras, which is pretty horrible. And so it was kind of ideal test flight conditions. Not then. An ideal test flight at all. And um, and uh, I knocked the VB off, and it landed absolutely perfectly. Um, and it inspired confidence from the very first time I took off. Uh, I knew it was it was a good wing. And uh, and and this one I bought is uh, is no different. Um, I just feel I see these fronts coming in, the wind's changing. We've got some quite interesting weather today actually. If you look out into Wensleydale out there, you can see that cloud below the below the tops that's actually been coming the opposite direction um, to what you'd expect from the wind today and um, we think that's actually a sea breeze front coming through now um, so despite the fact that we're pretty much in the middle of the UK here about as far away from the sea as it's possible to get if you look around us you can see a lot more of that sort of low clouds hanging down there so I think this is um, this is definitely it for the day now Okay, so uh, what's going on here, Tony, with this weather? It's um, it's it's pretty unusual. I've not seen something like this before. Well, we've got we've got a very light westerly, and then uh, I think that a sea breeze front has pushed right across the Vale of York, and it's pushing up the heads of the valleys. 
and back in 1983 it came in in a much more defined manner of this and I took it from the end of Weatherfell uh, right around the Dales and back again. Um, what were you flying then? I was flying an Airwave Magic 1 I believe. Very nice yeah. glider but not as nice as the Puma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I might need to get over to back to mine to yeah. get that. So, uh, so yeah, fan, uh, fantastic. And what I'm hoping to do is to uh, is to walk up some hills like uh, like Windbank and Parlick that I've not flown for many many years. In fact, hang gliders have not walked up and flown them for many years. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited about doing that. Great sites that have been made inaccessible by gliders that are too heavy. Mm. And, and and this is uh, I'm 58 years old, reasonably fit, but I, I can carry this with ease. Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful glider, and the finish on it is uh, exceptional. Um, can't fault it. Absolutely beautifully made. So you had your first flight on it today, and again, it's not exactly ideal test flying conditions, is it? It's scratchy, no, difficult to stay up. We, we were scratching between. Uh, zero height above the takeoff to maybe a hundred foot, and uh, once again took off in light winds and managed to sneak it in on the shoulder. First time I've flown it, uh, once again it handled and landed uh, beautifully. Yeah, mm. Really nice, really impressed. So yeah, that's uh, to me that's uh, that's the key about the Puma. It's that combination of um, combination of lightweight and performance in one glider. Yeah, yeah. and um, the length as well. So that's the other thing with carrying it. It's not just the weight that you carry on your shoulder. It's also having that leverage. So having something that's a bit shorter exactly. just makes it that yeah, much easier. Yeah, and it just feels it feels light and it feels secure. And I can actually slide the glider when it's short packed in the back of my long wheelbase van. So I don't even have to put it on a roof rack. Um, yeah. which is just as uh, it's halfway but it's like it's like having almost like having a paraglider but with uh, with a boatload more performance and speed and and a much larger flying window um if, as far as wind speed and and sink rate is concerned uh, maybe not sink rate but certainly certainly wind speed yeah. so yeah i love it absolutely love it because you started flying back in the 80s then and uh, then had a big break 79 actually right yeah so yeah Watch your glider. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I I think to be honest I'd better get back across to my glider as well and make sure it doesn't blow away as this um sea breeze front comes through. So uh yeah, we'll sign off there for the time being. Anyway. Yeah, great to see this though. Uh, I've not seen it for years. Fantastic. Unfortunately we should have been flying and uh, gotten the convergence of this, but uh not to be. But I hope. Yep. Very good. Right. Thanks Tim.